Lately, Apollo has been taking on writing a whole bunch of our infrastructure tooling in Rust. You saw Rover, a Supergraph Toolkit member, during our morning keynote with Matt. Uh, the graph router for federated super, uh, Supergraphs, the router, has been using uh, Rust. And finally, we've wrote uh, GraphOS, a cloud-native Supergraph runtime, also in Rust. And Sitting in a, such a critical position of everybody's infrastructure, it's important for us to be able to adopt a language uh, that will allow us to write stable and reliable and easily maintainable code. And if this list is not good enough, also performant is a nice little tidbit that comes with it. So that's why we're writing Rust. And to be able to kind of be part of the GraphQL and Rust ecosystem, it makes sense for us to be able to plant a seed that could later on grow into a really healthy garden, and which is why we're writing Apollo RS. The question you might be asking yourself is, why are you building a compiler for a query language? We have been working um, with some critical infrastructure, and we want to be able to do various things with complicated schemas, like compose graphs and plan queries and do any sorts of funky manipulations, and finally work with super graphs. And to be able to do that, we want to be able to ask questions of our schemas and our queries. Things like, find me the join directive, or what is the type of this field in a query operation? And can you find me the all use cases of the key entity? And all of that boils down to the fact that we need to be able to have something that's performant and reliable. But most of all, we need to also be able to have a ergonomic developer experience with something that we can build on and use. And so here, we take a leaf out of the Rust compiler book. Let's see what it can do with linting. Uh, we're using my colleague Avery's project called AWC CLI that allows us to run a lint and watch a schema for changes and analyze it. We'll run the lint, and we can see we've got four different errors. Um, and we'll work through them and fix them. First of all, we've got a subscription with two fields, which means we can't really have two fields because that's invalid. So we'll remove that. We've got three errors. We have two definitions, two, query, two operation definitions that shouldn't be there, or they're named identically. We can remove that, and that should fix that error. We now have two errors where we have a query or an operation definition that doesn't have a name. I think we'll just delete that because we already have an operation definition. And finally, we have a result that doesn't exist. So we can add a type result that has HTTP string. Great. And that's how you can use the compiler to run a linter with AWC CLI that my colleague Avery wrote. The, there's two key features to the parser process that we kind of like to carry on into the compiler. One is that it's made to be fault tolerant. What that means is that we don't early terminate when we encounter an error. Or, as we like to say in Rust, we don't panic. Um, what that means is given that we have a perfectly valid schema or a slightly invalid schema that has unsupported characters or missing field types, we're still able to return some part of the AST and errors alongside the AST if they're present. And regardless of whether those errors are present, we're still able to walk the AST. The parser is also meant to be lossless, which means that we keep everything that a user will send us. Uh, this means that if we have a readable schema, or slightly less readable schema, or schema that has even more uh, ignore tokens, we're still able to uh, produce an AST, and we keep all the tokens, all ignore tokens that were provided as part of that. This allows us to really focus on diagnostics. So if we go back to this schema, we're able to say that, hey, there are things that are missing here. And, but still show the exact input that you have provided us. Whereas if we didn't keep this, we won't be able to recreate the errors exactly as they were. So what does the roadmap for the project look ahead? 
Um, I'm going to tell you about all the stuff that I'm really excited about to work on. So this is like an engineering perspective of what's fun, not the product perspective, perhaps. Um, but let's look into what's coming up, peeking into the future. It's a compiler joke. Sorry. So the next thing we want to do is that um, not all of the validation is complete. So there, we want to be able to actually have a whole bunch of other stuff that needs to be validated. That's a, a goal of the project, is to have really good diagnostics, and that's part of that. We want to be able to have a whole bunch of files to form that database and to form the compiler. And multi-file support is a huge part of this project. We are going to be building out execution. And finally, um, while both Apollo Parser and Apollo Compiler compile down to WASM targets, It'll be nice to have an ergonomic API that people can use in their WASM. And so some WASM support is actually really necessary for that. And that's Apollo REST. Thank you very much.